Okay, well, that was interesting. It didn't work, and that was because it, the car actually needed a new... Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel and welcome to episode two of the new video series Road to the Ring in which I cover the preparation of both the car and the driver in advance of taking my Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport S back to its spiritual home, the Nürburgring's Nordschleife. In episode one, I took the car to a racing line in Milton Keynes and they checked it with Healthy before putting it on their dyno to find out whether it was stock or remapped and either way how much power it was producing. After that, they fitted their turbo in that pipe and put it back on the dyno to see if that produced any more power. While I was there, I collected these four boxes which contain some wheels which will be going on the car once they've been fitted with Goodyear's Eagle F1 Supersport R semi-slick track day tyres. So I'm just about to put them in the car. Yes, they do fit quite easily and take them up to a tyre centre in Birmingham. I'm just hoping when the tyres are fitted, I'll still be able to get them in because the pole and the net do make this golf a bit less practical than it otherwise would be. While I'm in the Birmingham area, I'm going to visit a VW Retrofit in Redditch where they're going to unlock Apple CarPlay. It's not the most essential thing you need for doing a track day in a car, but if you're navigating across Europe going to the circuit, it's quite useful to have because you can have Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, right there in the infotainment screen and it only costs 100 pounds to have it unlocked on this car or at least that's the theory it's a bit unclear as to whether the car will need a new usb port but we shall find out very very shortly so let me get loading all these wheels back into my mark 7 golf gti club sport s okay before we go to the tire center and get the tires fitted to my new wheels i just want to say there are two ways you can support the channel one which is free of charge, the other can actually save you quite a lot of money. The free way, as you probably guessed, is to subscribe. Big thanks to everybody who has subscribed already. Every single subscription means an awful lot, but if you haven't yet, then please, please do so. I'm sure you know how to do that by now. The way you can support the channel and be better off yourself is to sell me your car. I'm now buying cars for a very reputable dealer and their reputation means they can sell cars for good money and that means they can pay good money for your car. The only downside at the moment is that very selective over what they're buying so I mean we would try anything interesting so if you've got a really super low mileage performance Volkswagen or Audi then get in touch but specifically we're looking for Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport Edition 40 and Club Sport S they have to be unmodified with a full service history and average mileage or below. We're also looking for the following cars only up to three years old so audi rs3 particularly if you've got like a delivery mileage car or you haven't taken delivery of yours yet and you want to sell it you want to make a bit of a profit then get in touch so rs3 rs4 and rs6 okay back to the video Guys, I'm down at Selly Outside in Sturchley, a tyre centre I've been coming to for a long time. Yeah. And this is Ben, super helpful Ben. So if you need some tyres, oh, you do a lot more now, don't you? Yes. Servicing MOTs. Yeah, a lot now. Yeah. Everything, service MOTs, uh, tyres, wheel alignments. Yeah, yeah, and you're very good with your alignments, aren't you? Yeah. Basic diagnostics. Mm -hmm. So they're in Birmingham in the Selly Park, Sturchley area. And um, Ben's just got the R360 out. You can see it's black, which is the first time for me. I'm not really a big fan of black wheels, but I thought on a black car we'll give it a go. I've had silver, I've had the grey before, so it'll either work. If it doesn't work, what am I gonna do? Change it back. Yeah, we're gonna go gold if I don't like the black. <laughs> Might as well go the opposite. So Ben's just gonna get the big four R's on, which have done a few track miles. I think I've had them the best part of uh, two years now, starting off on the Mark 8s. Um, but they've still got loads of life in them, and uh, yeah, can't wait to get them on. 
I gather from the tire reviews.com website, you guys are really into sidewall stiffness. It does have a big influence on how a tire feels. And the Super Sport Goodyear is stiff. This is a Super Sport R. Do you think this is going to be a hard tire to get on the wheel because of that? It's definitely going to be more, more hard than the bigger tire. Yeah. We'll soon see. Okay, what's the stiffest sidewall do you fit then on a regular basis? Um, the stiffest sidewall I've fit would be Bridgestone. Really? Yeah. A recent um, one? Yes, yes. It's a I have to run that technology. Oh, okay, yeah. Are, I, oh, yeah, I fit on a vehicle. That's a good point, yeah. So if you've got run flats, the reason yeah. they run flat is because they've got a really stiff sidewall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily a good thing, which is strange, isn't it? Mm -hmm. People hate them, but yeah. on these, with these good years, they, they really make the car feel alive even the normal super sport which i'm running actually at the moment in fact i'm actually going to do a back-to-back -back test of the super sport and the super sport r that's assuming that i can get four wheels and tires in the car and take that's them to the car. track yeah. which we'll find out in a bit <laughs> but go on then ben show us how stiff or otherwise this sidewall is you've got some soap on there some lubricant Now we've got to use all the machining arms because yeah. it isn't that easy. Are they, are they lined with sort of nylon or something to, to stop damage on the wheel? There's yes, some plastic uh, in there. this machine special. Yeah. It's got the uh, plastic arm piece on it to uh -huh. prevent any wheel That's good, even if they weren't new. I mean, we try and respect every wheel we get, whether it is steel wheel, a moped wheel, yeah. I can. I can honestly tell you they have never damaged a wheel of mine. There we go. Not, not your easiest. Okay, while well, Ben is working away hard in there putting the tyres on the wheels, I thought we'd talk about the Apple CarPlay Android Auto upgrade to my head unit. Now, it's pretty tricky to tell you which cars this applies to and which it doesn't, but basically the early Mark 7s it won't apply to, the head unit isn't compatible. Somewhere around 2015, 2016, they gave you the option to have it, um, but a lot of cars won't have it enabled, but it's actually much easier if it's just a question of enabling it than it is changing the hardware which it would be on the early cars there's a lot of chatter on forums about how you might have to change the usb port on some cars even if the head unit's compatible well i haven't had that yet but then i haven't done many i think i've had three cars enabled they were 16 reg onwards and they all just needed enabling uh, no hardware changes at all i've also done a 66 reg club sport not not an s and edition 40 and again that was straightforward so i'm hoping this will be straightforward but who knows it's a good start though because in the main menu, if you press menu, there's an app connect option. That looks promising until you press that and it says you need to get it disabled. So that's why we're gonna go to VW Retrofit and Redditch in Redditch and get them to enable it. And hopefully that'll be that. And yeah, I mean, when I had my first one, I don't think I was that bothered. App Connect and wasn't really a big deal, but uh, once you get used to it, you really want it. So for the hundred pounds it's gonna cost, I think that's a bit of a bargain, right? Might be ready soon to get the wheels in the car if they fit. Right, next up, Ben's going to show us the balancing process. Because um, when you put a wheel, a tire on a wheel, they're not necessarily balanced. So if you put it on the car, you'll feel vibrations. Even though it's a new wheel, the tire may not be completely worn evenly, etc. The first thing you're doing is what? Checking the width? Uh, yes, we are measuring up the, uh, the width now. Okay, because you need to know that then to know whether it's balanced or not, yeah? Yeah, different okay. wheels are going to be a different jag. Yeah, so um, for instance, this one should I, have... I can tell you how wide this is. This one is an 8.5 jag. Correct. Yeah. Which just means eight and a half, eight and a half inches. Okay. We'll spin that up. Okay, so now they spin the wheel up as if you're driving the car to see uh, what vibration? Yeah, vibration, yeah. And, and what do these numbers mean? So um, 60 is on the right hand side, 60 is pretty average for, for a car wheel and it, like used tyre, if it's a brand new tyre it yeah. would be a lot less. Uh -huh. It might have a um, stone in it or something yeah, maybe, yeah. It very well done. Okay. It will change every time the tyre is repositioned on the alloy. Yeah. So each section of tyre is going a tiny bit different weight. Okay. Around. 
how much beyond that can you not balance it out with weights? When when's the wheel scrap? I would say after a hundred. Hundred, okay. Yeah, after a hundred. It does depend on the shape of the add-on. Yeah, I guess if it's visually knackered as well. It could be the tire that is making it unbalanced that much. Mm -hmm. It can be. Um, but yeah, we try our best to get them down. Okay. So the black weights, because... With a black wheel? I mean, yeah. Look at that detail of it. So you're putting a weight on there now to counteract the vibration, and it's not telling you... You don't have to work it out, you just stick that number on that bit of the wheel. Yeah, okay. yeah. So on the on that side is the inside on the outside, and the 15 goes on the inside. Then is that right? Is he still doing the 60? We are just doing the 60. Yeah. Yes. That's a 50 yeah. and a 10 then. Yeah. Yeah. So on this side. Yeah. Quite helpful, really. It shows the laser. Actually, ah. you can't really go wrong. Okay. So you've done the the bigger weight. Now you've yeah. just got the 15 to do. Indeed. So the machine tells you exactly where to put it on the wheel with the laser. Can you see that down there? Oh. Yeah. And now spin that up and we should get what, two zeros? We should get OK OK on this wheel. Ah. Oh. OK OK, brilliant, right. Perfect. Let's get him in the car then. OK, well, guys, we have managed to get them in the car, but it's a little bit messy. So two in the back, no problem. Although the tire is pretty tight on the rim, so we've had to pad that out. And then at the back, Ben actually passed these wheels over to me. I'm very uh, nervous I'm more worried about the bar though. The wheels are going to get caned. I want the interior. Yeah. I want the interior to stay mint. But we managed it. Managed. So big thanks. You've just got to come around my house in about an hour and help me unload. All right. Great. You're more but, than welcome. But uh, yeah, all done. So yeah, let's get back after we've got the car play done in Redditch and get these tyres on the car and see what you think. Do you think they're going to look all right? Cool. All right. Cheers, Ben. Thanks for all your help. No and uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, well, I'm here in Redditch at BW Retrofit and the chap who runs the place, Alex, I don't think he likes being on camera much, so that's fine with me. He doesn't say an awful lot, but every time I've been here, he's done the job and he's done it quickly and he's, you know, very well priced. So that's what matters. So the car will go in there and it'll come out, hopefully with Apple CarPlay enabled. I'm actually sat in the waiting area here at VW Retrofit. Like any good person who works on your car, he'd rather the customer keeps away from them while they're doing their sort of technical job. And we've got a good place for people to wear. Some really good magazines, nice posters, a really sort of clean sofa. The car's just behind that shutter there. And um, I asked if he's got his Mark 8 because he bought a club sport a bit after I did and he said he got rid of that. Is exactly what he said. So. He was just sick of all the faults and I kind of totally understand that because if you're into if you're used to bolts bubbles all the way up to 7.5, you can scan them after a lot of driving and they won't show any faults. With the Mark 8, it was really, really tricky. As you probably know, I had a parking sensor fault when I was leaving the dealership when I picked up the brand new car. So yeah, I enjoyed that car, but do I miss it? No. Okay, I've got the key back. Alex says it's all done, so we'll we'll find out. I asked him about the USB port which I read on forums and he said if it's Volkswagen and it's got the App Connect menu then you don't need to change the USB port on a set or Skoda you may need to change it even if it's got App Connect or whatever they call it sort of smart link in the menu so yeah he said try it but he said goodbye as well so he knows it's going to work so let's turn the key on the car's connected with a probably a, yeah, a fake cable but it's red and starting App Connect <laughs> I remember the first time he did this for me, I like could not believe it. So it's telling me to connect, which isn't great, but it could be because it's because it's a fake cable. Hmm. I'm also running out of fuel. Let's try that again then. All right. I think I'll try a genuine cable now, so hang on a sec. Okay, well that was interesting. It didn't work, and that was because it, the car actually needed a new USB port, which is the first time Alex has seen that on a Golf, and he's done loads of these. Luckily, he had it in stock, and he just popped the ashtray out and the climate control trim off, and 
yeah, I'm 80 quid poorer, but at least I've got it working and it's still, you know, it would have cost me a lot more anywhere else. So let's plug in. And let's see what happens. Okay, so that's familiar to me. I've got Waze working now, the phone's charging up. I'm just a, a happy bunny and okay, I'm 180 pounds poorer, but when you use when you speak CarPlay, you want to use CarPlay all the time because it just makes driving so much easier and safer. Right, let's now get home, probably about 25 miles away, and get these wheels out of the boot and see what they look like. Okay, I'm back at base and I'm ready to fit the wheels to my Club Sport S, but because we like to go into a bit more technical details on this channel than other channels, I'm not just going to fit them on the car and go, there you go, what? Do you think there's a few things I want to explain first, starting with the difference between the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersport, which I've been using on the road since I got the car, and the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersport R, which has been my track tyre for the past couple of years. The big difference, which I'm sure you can see, is that the Supersport has got five rows of tread blocks. The Supersport R has only got four, and that's because the two outer blocks of the Supersport are kind of melded into one, and this is one big, stiff, outer block that's designed to not deform when you're driving on track because all the weight will be on this side of the tyre. The other difference will be the compound. This, this is designed to work at higher temperatures, at just normal ambient temperatures. It's, it's not a particularly grippy tyre, but once you get it up to temperature, it is unbelievable. While the Supersport is a more roundy tyre, it's still a very performance tyre and it will still work on track, but it's not so temperature sensitive. The other difference will be in the construction and the sidewall. I'm looking forward to doing a back-to-back -back test of these two tyres on track later in the year, so keep a lookout for that. Now, another thing I've done is weigh the wheel and tyre combination, so it'd be nice to just weigh the wheels and compare the Racing Lines R360 with the Pretoria, but that takes a bit more planning, so I've just weighed them as they are here. And this was just under 19 kilograms, and the R360 was uh, just under 21. So there was two kilograms difference per wheel, so eight kilograms total unsprung weight. I know it's not great, but one of the mitigating circumstances, you do get more wheel with the R360. So this is an eight and a half inch wheel. This is an eight inch. So I, actually, I didn't think the weight difference was that bad. What you guys will probably appreciate is that on the Supersport you get a very, very chunky rim protector. So on this 8-inch wheel it's less of a stretch than the Supersport R because there's actually no protection on this wheel with this tyre. But it's not really designed to be parallel parking in Kensington. With this tyre though, yeah, there's a good sort of four to five mil of rubber there which should keep these nice and tidy. Price-wise, I, I love this calculation. One of these from a main dealer is the price of four Racing Line R360. So I think a summer like £1,300 for a Pretoria, which is a lot of money, especially with their reputation for cracking. And Racing Line will sell you just one if you do end up damaging one. So yeah, it's a lot less nerve wracking driving on our ruined UK roads with the R360 than a little bit of a weight penalty is kind of worth it for the piece of mind. Right, okay, now let's get the car up in the air and I'll show you what I have to do to the car before I can fit the new wheels to it. Okay, with the wheel off, it's a good time to inspect your brake discs and pads thoroughly but it's also a good time to deal with any corrosion. Inevitably, when you're coming out of winter, there'll be corrosion to the brake disc, even just cosmetic corrosion, but you might find that the bit where the wheel sits is corroded as well, and that could cause you a problem if you have a puncture at the roadside and you can't get the wheel off. Now, in this car, we've got a different problem, and that's that some grease that's been applied to the hub has melted, and it's sort of running onto the bell of the brake. This is a special disc on the Club Sport S, same as the TCR, a little bit smaller than the ones on the Mark 8 Golf, 
uh, GTI Club Sport, and that's got an aluminium bell which doesn't corrode, so it's very easy to get this looking pretty because it's just aluminium. Um, but it's all covered in smears of grease, which isn't good, particularly if the car's going on track because it's going to get hotter than it did on the road. And if this is from road use, it may have gone on track. It's not great. So what we want to do is clean all that off with some brake cleaner. This is a solvent that is designed for this job. It can do loads of things like get rid of oil, but uh, that's better. And we just get any grease off this hub, wherever it is, even if it's where we want it to be. Okay, we'll give the disc a bit of a clean as well. Okay, that looks better already. You can see it's gleaming and because it's in pretty good condition, I'm just going to use a polishing pad to clean it up. And if you leave your car out of gear, it does make it a lot easier. You can turn the disc around, just make sure it doesn't roll away. The other area that you can clean up as well is the outer bit of the brake disc. So when it leaves the factory, it gets some coating on it, but that doesn't tend to last forever. So it's going a bit rusty on this one. So I'm just going to use a, a wire brush attachment for my uh, drill. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. And if you really want to make it perfect, you can probably paint it with some silver paint like people do to the bells, which we don't need to on this car. Okay, that's good. Again, a bit of brake cleaner will do no harm. And then now to apply a little bit of grease, just a tiny smidgen where the wheel will sit. That's good. And then a little bit more in inside the hub because there's a bit of rust there. But we just want to coat it. We don't want to put big blobs of it. Okay, that's good. Now it's ready for the wheel. Actually, no, it's not. We need to give the calipers a clean. So with the R360 wheels, you get new wheel bolts. So whatever you do, don't use your old ones because these are tapers and these are rounded. So if you fit these to the wrong wheels, you won't have very secure wheels. So I'm using a torque wrench and the factory setting for these is 120 newton meters but i always put it a little bit more just to allow for say this torque wrench not being particularly accurate the other thing i should point out is that you don't get a locking wheel bolt with the racing line nut so if you do want that then you'll have to buy that separate separately in the correct taper shape so the torque wrench will click when it gets to the right Talk. Okay, that's good. Now, I didn't really worry too much about this on the silver and grey wheels I've had before but the silver racing line bolts really really stand out so I'm going to buy some of these little caps you can fit the Volkswagen ones on there you get with the Mark 7 but they're a bit tight what you just need are these little caps that are from a Mark 3 and um, you can buy them on eBay for peanuts I think so I'll just get some more but if you do fit them 
make sure you get one of these, which is a little plastic tool for getting them off, because it could be quite annoying if you forget that. Now it's time for me to ask you guys what you think of my Deep Black Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport S with the gloss black Racing Line R360 wheels on it. Let me know in the comments. And I do read the comments because I remember just over a year ago when I changed the wheels on my Boxster GTS from silver to satin black, there were some comments that didn't like what I did. And you know, I, I do take that all in. And I've actually changed the wheels on that car because I thought there was a color that was more flattering than black or silver. And I'll reveal that in a, in a couple of weeks. For now though, it's all about the Golf and I liked it on the Pretorias in their sort of smoky silver color. I like it on these wheels. They're not a completely different style to Pretorias because they're sort of double five spokes. Yeah, it looks tough. Is there a tougher looking Golf GTI than this with black and black? I'm not sure. I used to have the registration number EV11 DUB Evil Dub on my old Club Sport S, which was also black, but it had the silver Pretorias. And I think this one looks even more evil. So Mr. Burt, if you're watching this and you want to sell me back that number plate, <laughs> please do, because this is more evil than your turmeric camper van. Right, yeah, so I think it looks uh, pretty good. The big difference with Pretorias is that we've got an extra half inch of the wheel and that sort of gives the car a bit more of a stance and it should give it a bit more stability on track because you're effectively widening the track. So yeah, if I don't like the black, then I can just get them changed. The Prestige Wheel Centre charge is about 300 pounds for a color change. You can pick any color you want pretty much. You can even pick a Porsche color. I'm kind of tempted to get these wheels done in the Porsche, the really bright gold color called Satin Aurum, which you'll see on actually 718 uh, GTS's end, more commonly on the GT4. So let me know what you think about that. But for now, black will do very nicely. Right, the next video of Road to the Ring will deal with the one kind of problem I've had with this car since I bought it. It's still under warranty with warranty wise. So we're gonna go through the process of claiming under that warranty, seeing if it actually does cover this problem. Bearing in mind the car's done sort of 13,000 miles, there shouldn't be really these kind of faults with it. And then we're gonna take it to a specialist and get the repair done and hopefully have a Club Sport S that is pretty much perfect and then ready to go on track. So look out for that. As ever guys, thanks for watching this Volkswagen video. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.